Hi there. Welcome to a new episode of Branding with Friends, the show where branding meets key small business topics. Here you're going to learn tips straight from the experts on everything from trademarking to pricing, even to writing a book. We focus on what you can do right now to use these topics and the power of branding to attract your ideal clients. I'm your host, branding expert, Annie Franceschi of Greatest Story Creative. I help service business owners tell their story and show their value through clear messaging and consistent branding. I'm also a former Disney storyteller, professional speaker, and the author of the best-selling book, Permission to Try. And today I am so excited to introduce you to another one of my friends from the business world. Uh, if you have been thinking about thought leadership, you know, who isn't thinking about thought leadership these days, um, and wondering how you could use that to grow your coaching or consulting or service-based practice, this, today's episode is truly for you. Um, my guest is the wonderful Diane Diaz. Um, Diane and I connected many years ago through some of the work that she does, and she is a speaking coach a, and a personal brand strategist with Speaking Your Brand. Speaking Your Brand, their mission is to help more women develop the communication skills, platform, and confidence to step into thought leadership, influence, and power on stages, in the media, in business, on boards, and in politics because it's through women's stories, voices, and visibility that we challenge the status quo and change existing systems to benefit more people. What a great mission, Diane. Yes. Uh, Diane regularly speech, speaks on thought leadership, personal branding, LinkedIn strategy, and women's empowerment. She currently teaches branding and marketing classes at Full Sail University, holds a master's degree in business administration from the University of Central Florida, and she has many experiences, uh, years of experience in branding, marketing, public uh, speaking, and education. Um, welcome to the show. I'm so glad you're here, Diane. Well, thank you so much, Andy. I'm excited to be here. I feel like I, we sort of connected through the world of yeah. podcasts and all yes. of these um, things because I started listening to the Speaking Your Brand podcast and mm -hmm. learned about Carol Cox, who founded that company. I know you work really yeah. closely with Carol, and um, we've just stayed friends over the years. And I know you you are a very talented brand strategist in your own right. Yes, uh, we were talking. <laughs> we were talking recently about you know, what are the things that coaches and consultants need to know? Mm -hmm. And this topic of thought leadership just comes up all the time. When I work with oh, yeah. clients there, they, you know, when I build a website for a client, oh, I got to have a blog. I got to be a thought leader, <laughs> all this. So it's such a hot topic. And I yeah. know, you know, so much about it. How did you become passionate about the area of thought leadership? And, and could you briefly define it for all of us? Yeah, that's a great point um, to define it, I think helps people. Um, a thought leader is someone who has a point of view on a topic and then talks about it passionately and boldly and kind of gets that idea out there. And in many cases, builds a movement around it. So um, thought leadership is, goes hand in hand with branding, I would say. Absolutely. And how did you become so passionate about thought leadership? Well, I think it's through a combination of things. So I've been in marketing and branding for a really long time. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I've watched um, business owners kind of work around different things and even people in in corporate positions you know work their way up in different roles and it seems like it's so much easier to build success whether it's for your own business or for the the industry that you're in if you take a stand on something right if you stand for something right. and if you really build thought leadership and a platform around what it is you want to do, it's much easier. It kind of gets teeth, right? Right. And then it can grow from there. So it, it's a passion of mine because of the women that we work with at Speaking Your Brand, when we work with them on, you know, creating signature talk or defining their message, we really help them step into that thought leadership. And when you see the change that someone can make when they go from having just a message to having thought leadership and actually expressing that thought, thought leadership, it is phenomenal to witness someone grow in that way. It is. It is such a wonderful thing. And I'm continually learning all about it as I know you are, because mm -hmm. it's sort of this ever evolving idea sure. in the business world, especially, but also in, you know, as you well pointed out, um, if you're a career professional who's listening to this, um, yes. if you're new to Branding with Friends, uh, we do three tips. So Diane has brought three great tips today about thought leadership and being a service business owner. So we're going to share those first two, and then we're going to save that third one for the end of the episode. So make sure to stay put because <laughs> it's so much value today. And I know I'm learning alongside you guys. So um, Diane, now that we know a little bit more about what thought leadership is, yes. what is the first thing, the first sort of action item, the thing we can take away about thought leadership if we are a coach or a consultant? Yes. And this might be a little scary for some people, but you should not be afraid to challenge the status quo and 
any assumptions that are in your industry. So you really, it's a little bit like going against the grain and it can be scary because taking a stand sometimes means that not everybody's going to agree. And you might really be going against the grain in your industry because you might, you might see something that really just is a pet peeve of yours in your industry. And you just wish it could be d- done differently. Right. So it's important to kind of champion that. And, but you have to have a lot of courage to do that because it can be very scary. I think that's such a really um, interesting first place to start, which yeah. is like, get out of your comfort zone. If oh, you yeah. want to be a thought leader, right. You know, yes. you can't be scared. And I've been thinking a lot about this because I think there's, I have been seeing with the branding that I do, I feel like the branding I focus on is very much like about clarity and consistency Mm. because Mm -hmm. that is what my clients have consistently come to me for. And I think what my gift is, but I think it's levels, right? So like the first step you have to work on is um, being clear. Oh, yes. understood yes. before you can layer in that, like, and another thing about <laughs> right. my point, you know, how do you have a point of view if you don't have a solid foundation to place the point of view on? Yes. Absolutely. So how, how does someone go about, I, I think you make a great point about, you know, being, being bold, being brave, picking something mm-hmm. that you, you know, sort of against the grain, as you said. Mm-hmm. Um, but how do you pick something that you're going to focus on for thought leadership that is going to serve your business well? Because we could, you know, we could come up with something theoretically that could really chafe our ideal clients, like could not align with their values and tank our business. So how do you pick that right thing? Oh, that's a good question. So I would say, I mean, obviously you don't want to just go find something that's so um, out there that it, you know, as you said, goes against what your clients even want, because then why are you even in business? But right. <laughs> By the same token, as the business professional and the the professional in the space that you're in, it is up to you as as a thought leader to find the, those areas that maybe your audience isn't aware of that are either sticking points or places where something can be done better or something that needs to be said that isn't being said. And does it mean that some people in your audience might go away? Yes. Yes. But what I would say to that is they are probably not your audience. They're not your ideal audience. And I think it's important as a business professional to be true to who you are. So if there, if there's something in your industry or in the space that you operate in, that is really important to you. And that really kind of is a platform that you want to stand on. You really have to put yourself out there and some people won't like it. And that's okay. It, it, I know it's scary and I know it sounds counterintuitive to say, oh, I want, it's okay if some of my clients go away. It, trust me, the more specific and clear you are, the more of the right clients you're going to get. And so it's important to know that. I think there's a lot of bravery that comes with that. And that's conversations I'm constantly having with clients and prospective yeah. clients is, you know, there's a lot of understandable um, hesitation. Sure. To niche down to yes. have a, per- and then this level, I think of thought leadership we're talking about today, which is committing to a perspective, sharing yes. who you are and, sure. you know, sort of stepping up to the things that you're going to take a perspective about, and you're not going to be wishy-washy about. Um, but that is going to upset some people and being prepared for that. But I think that is that next level of brand thinking yes. um, that comes with, you know, if you have a goal of say scaling to six figures or multiple six figures or seven, you know, people, if you look around the people who are making that kind of money, they have a perspective about yes. what, even if they don't have a blog, they have at least have a perspective. It's so true. They don't, they don't just talk about everything and try to appeal to everyone when we right. know in branding that that's never the way to go. Absolutely not the way to go. And that's comes across in every Branding with Friends episode is it's not for everybody, but it's, you know, for your people, Yes. you know, but that's, I think I'm always trying to um, find better ways of explaining this because I know I was really, um, as I was getting started even branding my own branding business that I Mm. felt like, well, I can do all these great things for people, but it's not your job to serve everybody because you can, you can serve a smaller subset of people so well that you can be that lighthouse for them. So it's like, I think thought leadership is about like sort of making that light brighter, you know? Absolutely. Yes. It's not about making more lights. It's about making a brighter light, right? Yeah. Right. Right. (laughs) Because different lighthouses for different, for different people, different strokes for different folks. Exactly. Um, Well, I think that's a great first place to start. What is the next thing we want to keep in mind as a second tip? Yeah. So the next tip that I have for building thought leadership is to define a clear that's the key, <laughs> thought leadership idea, and then really communicate it with boldness and conviction. It's, it's 
you have to get over the fear initially of standing out and saying whatever it is that goes against the grain, but then you have to start communicating it. You have to get that idea out there. When you take a leadership position like that, you help others to be brave to do the same thing. So if you have, if you have something that is really important to you and it's really a thing you're going to, you know, stake your flag, how do they say that? Put your stake in the ground yeah. over. <laughs> if you, if it's going to be that thing, that's great. But if you're not going to share that, and if you're not going to stand behind it, you're not going to empower other people to get on board with that idea. Right. So right. you want to really kind of bring that out to the audience and stand behind what you say and really be convicted about what you're saying and what you're believing so that you are empowering others, then it actually then helps your audience to not only say, yeah, you know what? I feel the same way, but it also helps them to take action. Yeah. And the taking action is where you start to get the movement, right? Where you start to create these, you literally create a movement behind what it is that you believe. There's a great um, TED talk. I don't know if you've seen it. I'll try to find mm. it so we can put it in the show yeah. notes. Um, but it's like how to start a following or how to start a movement. It's like three minutes long. I don't mm. know. Have you seen this? You know what I'm talking I about? I think I've heard of it. Yeah. It's like someone starts dancing and then like another part, like it's out at like a festival before sure. all this stuff happens and we had to be six feet apart, but you know, right. somebody's <laughs> dancing, someone else starts dancing and then everybody starts dancing. And the point that they make is like the person who started that movement was actually not the first person. It was the second person. Oh yeah. Yes. It was the person yeah. that added that, that took action and that mm. was inspired to take action. So I think that really goes nicely with your point. So we'll look that up. We'll put the, the note, but it's, it's, yeah. they're pretty awkward dancing, but it makes us your point of, um, you know, inviting somebody into something, right? It's yes. convic what is conviction if you're not talking about it? What is conviction if you're not showing up and using it? Um, it's great to make that decision behind the scenes. I would say the same thing is great to have a beautiful website, colors, fonts, logos, the things, taglines. But if you don't right. go out and use them, what good is a hammer that you let sit in the shed? It's true. It's true. So if you if you're defining this thing that's your thought leadership idea, and you feel really um, called by it, right, and you think this can really have a huge impact in my industry, you need to get it out there because number one, you won't see what impact it will have until you start putting it out there. And number two, like you said, you just need that one other person to get on, to, on board with you. And then it becomes this movement that's going to have so much greater impact than if you just on your own tried to create that. Could you give us, I think this is, thought leadership is one of those things where it's just a buzzword that gets thrown around a lot mm. and you've done a great job explaining it. Could you give us an example or two of what you're talking about when you pick sort of one clear idea of something you could get behind from a thought leadership perspective? Yes. Well, I'll, I'll give you two examples. One is a great. client or a former client or client. And another one is um, Brene Brown. <laughs> so uh, Brene I think Brown. I've heard of her. You sure. might've heard of Brene. Um, she talks a lot about shame. And that is, and she talks about this in many of her talks is that she had a lot of fear around that being her message, right? Because there's a, it's shame because we're all ashamed to talk about her. Right? So, so that kind of became her platform. And if you look at her content, much of it connects around that idea of shame and what it, what overcoming shame can do, what talking about shame can do. It all kind of revolves around that idea. Right. And so it actually breaks down the walls and lets people feel okay being vulnerable and talking about it because she's given them permission to do that. Yes. Yes. And so yes. there's and a great she's, example. She's a little successful. Just, Maybe I mean, you've heard of Brene Brown. Possibly just a little bit of success. She might have one or two books. <laughs> I love that you've pointed that, especially, you, you know, that is a topic of vulnerability. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah. 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 And I think, I think that idea of being vulnerable is what goes along with this idea of being a thought leader is you have to be willing, if you want to position yourself as a thought leader and trust me, you do, because there's a lot more action behind that than just putting out all this content. Yeah. You have to be willing to be vulnerable because as I said, some people aren't going to be aligned with your idea and that's okay. And I guarantee you Brene Brown and, or anybody in a position like that has haters, so to speak, or people who oh. don't agree that's okay. And she probably well, I mean, knows one of her talks. She has like a whole thing about how like the comment section about destroying yes. in one of them. Oh. Yeah. 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 The so comment section. Yeah. Don't ever read the comment section. It's not worth don't it. Ever. <laughs> yeah. Don't ever. So, and then the other, <laughs> the other example is um, Tammy Lally, who 
is one of our clients and she did a TED talk at a local TEDx chapter here in Orlando on money shame. And it included, and she's a money coach. Mm-hmm. So her whole thing, her whole talk was around money shame and this idea of how, you know, if you get caught up in that, it can kind of rule your life. And it, I won't, you can go watch the TED talk. So I won't reveal what, what the sort of the sure, hook the is of that of it, story, yeah. but it's, it was very personal. It was very vulnerable. And I'm certain it's incredibly scary for her to share that in her TED talk. But by doing that, she not only created momentum behind her message, but she yeah. also kind of broke down those walls for others who might be dealing with a similar thing related to, you know, what their family might've taught them about money and how they deal with money and how that's impacting them. Right. So right. it kind of opens up the doors for your audience to have breakthroughs and to have movement on that. Do you think that whatever you pick has to have some sort of an emotional connection for you? Well, <laughs> I think everything any business does should have an emotional connection, but that's because I teach branding and, and I, <laughs> I know that branding is all about an emotional connection and it doesn't have to be something so earth shattering as money, shame, and the personal story that you would hear or Brene Brown and that kind of stuff. I always use mundane examples. You know, you could be, you could be, um, uh, a financial planner. You can create, there can be an emotional connection about that. You could be a CPA, I can find emotional connection in that. I can find emotional connection in carpet cleaning, frankly. So right, right. So I think if you can tap into the emotion of the audience and you can sort of tell a story that brings them into it and kind of makes them feel like, oh no, I've experienced a similar thing. That's yeah. where you are and you're able to create that that momentum and that movement. Well, I think that's a really, you know, something I hadn't realized about thought leadership. And as people are thinking through what topic they might choose, I think. I, I know you're like, well, of course it includes that. But I think some people like even me, who is this close to branding, I think hearing like looking for those things that draw a certain emotional connection yes. in you will let, and have emotional resonance for you will likely have emotional resonance for others. Yes. You don't have to be the queen of shame as no. Brene Brown has <laughs> taken this that title. Spot is taken. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. that spot has, has been taken, yeah. but um, you know, what is it about your perspective? And I think this comes back to if you've worked through professional branding, one of the things that you know, a strategist will work, you know, this is what I do with my clients is like, well, what is it? What are the things that really um, set you apart from your competitors? You know, who are the people you're most often compared to? Why are you different? There's something within that about a perspective of Mm -hmm. how you approach things that I think a branding person can help you see, because you are a branding person, I am as well. Um, So sometimes it's, you know, if you were feeling stuck about that, that could be time for a conversation of what would be my topic, Um, you know, whether it was speaking your brand or greatest story creative. Or we yeah, just follow on these lines. Yeah. Um, but I love I love these tips so far. And I know we've got a third one that will bring it all together. But before we get there, I know that you have brought along something special for our branding with friends folks, something coming up, and as well as something if you've discovered it uh past this great event you've got going on. So tell us a little bit about um what you have for our watchers and listeners. Yes. Yeah, so and and what I'm going to share, the first thing I'm going to share is actually an opportunity to see some women being very vulnerable and um, kind of getting on their soapbox and talking about something that um, will move the audience to action. And that is our uh, live virtual summit. It's called Brave Bold Beyond. And so it's happening. So if you're going to see this soon, this this session is happening on April 1st. And it is 2021, (laughs) April 1st, 2021. And it is an amazing full day. And I would just say block off your entire calendar that day. It's a full day of speakers. We'll actually have four different themes. We'll have 12 speakers and they'll be speaking on very um, personal. They'll be sharing their personal stories, but there's a message behind each story. And the message connects with the theme of each of the sections of, of the day, but also with the overall theme of being brave, being bold and going beyond what you think you can do. Mm. So um, I can tell you that these speakers um, come from all walks of life, all age ranges, very diverse um, backgrounds, just diversity all throughout. And their stories are very diverse. And I think it will be inspiring to kind of see how someone gets vulnerable and shares a personal story to a very large audience. This is this is all happening live, so there will be no recording. So if you want to watch it, you have to come 
and see it. Um, but you can go to speakingyourbrand.com slash summit if you'd like okay. to register. So I would encourage you to do that because again, it's going to be very inspirational. So if you have something that's a, you think is a thought leadership idea, but you're nervous about sharing it, come get inspired because yeah. this will make you not afraid. <laughs> yes. And that's coming up in just a few weeks. So we'll make yes. sure that link is here, but um, at any time or, or far beyond April 1st, 2021, if you're watching this, what else? Um, I know you brought something else along. Perfect. I did. Yes. Yeah. So for everybody who's watching this, you can download our free workbook that will help you develop your thought leadership message and your voice. So this is a, I think this workbook will be really inspiring for someone who hears this, watch, watches this branding with friends and says, you know, well, I'm not, I'm not really sure what my thought leadership message is. I'm not even really sure what that means, right? right? And how do I find my voice so that I can share this with with my audience? This workbook will walk you through that and it will kind of give you a little bit of inspiration to come up with your thought leadership message and and maybe um, help you feel empowered to share it and not as scared. So wow. you can, yeah. So, and, and I will say it's kind of fun to start working through that. And even if you're not ready to share it, at least working through it to kind of have an idea where you might want to go is a great exercise to get clearer on your message in general. So yeah. you can download that at speakingyourbrand.com slash Annie, A-N-N-I-E. Oh my gosh, I have my own link. You do, so it's exciting. easy. <laughs> How wonderful. And we'll make sure that's here. So wherever you're watching or listening yes. to Branding with Friends, that link will be available to you. Awesome. I do hope you check that out. I need to check that out myself. I get so many great um, yeah. downloads from Speaking Your Brand. Mm. It's a wonderful podcast. If you're at oh, all interested you. in speaking, thought leadership or anything, I've binged episodes many a time. <laughs> Um, spoken to Carol a few times. She's wonderful as is Diane. So definitely yeah, check oh, out the you. podcast as well. And if you guys have been listening and, and you've been like thought leadership, I don't even know how to clearly say what my business does. <laughs> yes. That's why I'm here. That's where we're here together. Um, if you want to talk with me privately, you can actually grab private time with me on my website at greateststorycreative.com. Just hit the big red button that says free consultation and you can set time to speak with me one-to-one. -one. Um, and I'm so glad that you were here, Diane. Let's let's dive in. Lastly, we we got through these tips yes. today, and the first tip, I'm going to see if I can remember. Yes. <laughs> um, so we need to stop being afraid to kind of get out there and be a thought leader and challenge the status quo. And challenge the status quo. So going against the grain. That was yes. what I remembered. Yeah. Um, the second thing is sort of picking one clear foci, mm -hmm. right? Um, and what is the third thing that we need to be focused on? So here's the third thing, and this. This can be one of the maybe more difficult things to do, but it's figuring out and creating a thought leadership, what we call a container for your idea. So that could be something like, and this makes your idea kind of portable, so to speak. So this is something like a podcast, or you can create a challenge. We have a challenge for speaking your brand called choosing or choose women's voices. I think that's what it's called. But um, so we've done a challenge like that before. And you can do a challenge around anything that's your thought leadership idea. It could be an event. Maybe you want to do something around empowering women or empowering teachers or whatever it is. So you could create an event around that. So that, that creating that container makes this idea tangible. It makes it real, tangible. It makes it portable and shareable. So your audience can get involved in it. They help spread the word about it they help to make it a bigger, so they change it from a moment to a movement. Now I didn't, uh, I don't know who said that, but somebody said it, so I'm gonna use it. <laughs> it goes from a moment to a movement because more people get involved, they end up um, sort of exponentially helping it grow, right? right? And then the impact that you have becomes larger. Right. Because now you're not just impacting one or two people, you're impacting many more people and your thought leadership idea grows. And that is what we want. Yes. I love that you talked about that. And I love that you introduced this idea of a container. I was thinking something like a purpose Pyrex because I'm oh, a branding person. Yes. So what, you, know, you take your Pyrex and it's indestructible and people share it. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, but I love that you just illustrated, I think, a common misconception around thought leadership. I think people hear thought leadership and I know my clients are constantly like, I have to blog. I have to blog. I have to blog. And I set up a blog for them and they blog three times. And they never blog yes, again. Right. It's because it's hard and it takes hard. time. It's yeah. hard. It takes time. It's a really long game strategy. Yes. Um, I did it myself for many, many years and like, you know, diligently once a week, 
didn't see the results, was yes. writing about the wrong things, uh, you know, super serving one audience, like mm-hmm. doing all the you know, wrong things. I did what I thought the marketing gurus were saying I yes. had to do. And so you are the perfect branding with friends guest because you come on with a lot of permission to do it in your own yes. way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point because some people love to write. That's great. Then write a blog. Some people don't like that, right? So don't mm-hmm. do not do that. Don't pick something that you can't stick with and also that you don't enjoy because I mean, gosh, life is way too short to not be enjoying what you're doing, right? Yeah. Maybe it's a podcast. Maybe you like to talk so you could create a podcast. Maybe it's a video series like this. Maybe it's a webinar series, right? There are so many different ways you can get your thought leadership message out there and, and a container that you can choose for it. So yeah. it doesn't, you don't have to do something that you don't enjoy. Pick something you love, but- put it in a container and start getting it out. And so you can get other people involved in it to help you share that, that message. I think that's such a great point. And I've been doing a lot of like brand consulting, which I call clarity consulting Mm -hmm. and helping people figure out uh, if you, if you don't have a strategy for your marketing that you actually enjoy, you won't do it or you won't do it well. It's so true. Simple as that. And if you don't have a system, you won't be consistent. So it won't really exist. Yes. Um, and that's how we're here on like, I think episode almost 20 of Branding with Friends, which started as a container strategy yes. for me because I went, I was going to go on maternity leave and I didn't want you guys to forget about me. So created Branding with Friends, put a bunch of episodes together before I left. But then when I was on maternity leave, you know, an episode come out every three weeks, I was with my little boy, had just been bored, didn't have to think about it get to share audiences with amazing folks like Diane. So, you know, a container can look like lots of different things. And if you set up yourself with a system and a strategy and a perspective, which is, I think a great word from today, perspective. It's Um, so true. Diane, is there anything else you would really want us to know about thought leadership for today? Um, I would say that just in general, it can be scary, but give it a try because I think what you'll find is, and we've found this with our clients, Once you start defining this thought leadership message and you kind of dip your toe in the water and start putting it out there, even if it's something very personal and revealing and vulnerable, you're going to get so much support that you're going to think, you know what? I'm so glad that I did this Yeah, because yes, it is scary, but people want you to succeed. They really do. And and they're out there, your ideal audience is out there that's going to help you get this message out. So just, just give it a try. I Trust me, it'll be okay. So you, you're going to say give it a try and I'm going to add hang in there because if you try yes, something once, too. nobody saw it. If you tried it twice, maybe two people saw it. Keep going, do it for a little while before you see if it had results and if yes. you like it or not. Yes. But Diane, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Amazing Annie. Diane Diaz of Speaking oh, Your Brand thanks. and many other things. Um, <laughs> we hope that you enjoyed another episode of Branding with Friends today. So many thanks to Diane Diaz for joining us. I hope thank you, you tune in. You're welcome. Um, I hope you tune in next time when we're going to tackle yet another great topic where branding meets business. Until then, I'm Annie Franceschi of Greatest Story Creative. You can find more episodes, branding resources, and so much more on our website at greateststorycreative.com. Take care. Bye.